In today's video, I'm going to show you how I design custom logos, specifically this one, so keep on watching. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to show you all in this video how I turn this idea into a working logo design. It was such a fun logo to create, so I figured I would show you guys behind the scenes of how I design it, the things I'm thinking about, and also before I jump into showing you the actual logo design, I wanted to mention how important the first phase of my branding package is, which is the branding strategy. So if you have not watched that video, which I posted a couple videos ago, I will link it up above here. Definitely go check that out. It's super helpful to know what I prepare before I jump into logo designs because that is what helps me not get super stuck on the logos. I know exactly what I'm going to be creating when I jump into the logo designs after I sketch it and everything. So I'm so excited to show you all behind the scenes of this specific branding. Before I hop onto my computer screen to show you behind the scenes, I wanted to mention I do have a branding course and a logo design course. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about my process and the things I like to Kind of think about and things I've learned over the years when it comes to branding and logos. So definitely go check those out. They're always linked down below. Um, but yeah, with that said, let's hop on over to my computer screen. So in case you didn't go and see the brand strategy video, I wanted to show you the mood board that I'm going to be referencing as I design these logos. So overall, the goal of the logo is to have some really fun like patchwork style illustrations, um, also having some fonts that look a little more like handcrafted but like bold, simple to read. So I like to include these um, two in the mood board to kind of explain to her this is like the overall vibe I'm going to go for with the logo designs. So that kind of helps me understand if she likes the look of that. So. Um, yeah, those are the two inspiration images I provided, and then we do have the colors already, so I will be showing her color options in the logos as well, um, but I just wanted to show you what these two look like so you can kind of see everything flow together. So the first step with any logo design is that I like to sketch out all of my ideas. So you'll see me here drawing out all of the different monogram ideas, the ways I can play with the A and the F in her name. Um, I came up with this cool idea of doing like a player's card, so that's definitely one I want to bring to life with my iPad. Um, but yeah, super rough sketches, but it kind of helps me understand. Then I just jumped into some logo designs, was not feeling creative at all this day, so I actually put everything away and decided to come back to it the next day. Okay, so I already started creating quite a few concepts. The first concept is a very simplified like monogram logo. Um, as you can see though, in this one, you can see the white in the A and the F, but I thought I would just show you guys in general how I created this sort of like monogram look. So one of the important things with her branding is to find a font that that really matches that vibe I was going for. So luckily I have this font and this is a font she will have to go pay for. Um, most of my clients, I always have them pay for the license on their own because usually there's only one user per license. So it's something to just keep in mind. But I'm gonna show you how I created that kind of monogram. So I'm using this font called Cien Motels by Shay Nunez. I love her, love her fonts. Um, so I'm gonna add that and let me clip this microphone. Okay, so we have the A. Now I'm gonna put the F and I overlapped them like this because I kind of wanted the F to like create that line that the A requires. Um, so there's so many ways you could do it. We could do it like that. We could like flip it and have it come through like that. I just didn't like the look of that as much. So I'm going to show you this way. So now that I have it like this, I'm going to go to object create or type create outlines and I'm going to 
zoom in on this F here. What I did, so I'm going to create the circle real quick so you can kind of see my thought process with everything. So I'm going to create this. I'll just make it white for now and put it behind the letters. Okay, and basically when I saw it like this, I was like, I kind of want the F to reach the edge of the circle. Um, so to do that, I'm going to lock this circle real quick so I can scroll over this. So what you can do is you can go and click the direct selection tool and highlight just this part of the F and pull it out as far as you would like. But I specifically did it for this top part here. And I just had it reach the edge and then we can also create a clipping mask. So. Uh, it is um, fully within the circle, but I kind of like played around with it. I don't think I even went all the way to the edge. I went like that. And then for the A, I highlighted it like this, brought it down so that it was off the page like that. And then you could do the same for this part. Sorry, Leo was getting in. Um, Leo was getting in my bag, so I had to go run and stop him. Um, but yeah, that's how you would direct select the edges to pull them down. Um, so you can do it like that. I'm going to actually just go back to the A and pull it down just as far as the F so they kind of line up that way. And then to know if you selected the right part, these will be closed, these will be open, the little squares. So I'm going to pull it down like that something like that um, you can also like pull a line in here to kind of make sure that they are aligned properly just so it creates that like flow of things so let's take some playing around with I'm actually going to remove a circle for this for this one to show you. This wanted to give you an idea of like what I keep in mind when I am pulling letters like that. So there we go. Now I'm going to go to object path and we're going to go to, it's funny when I'm teaching this, it's like I'm a robot when I'm doing it. So it's hard for me to remember what it is I'm doing. Um, we're going to go to object path offset path. And then I'm going to do, let's say, an offset of like five. And then it's going to look crazy for a minute, but we're going to highlight it. And we're going to click the Shape Builder tool. And what we're going to do is you're going to hold Option on your keyboard. And you'll see it turns from the plus sign to a minus sign. We're going to highlight over this and delete it. Um, so this is going to help me have that cutout effect. So you can either have the F as the main letter or the A as the main letter. It all depends on how you cut it out. But I'm going to go like this. I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have F as the main letter for this one. So I'll show you guys how I'm going to make that happen. You can also like make them two different colors to help visually figure out which letter you're deleting or not. So there we go. There's an A and an F. Um, that is pretty much how I created this outline effect. Now to create the cutout effect, I'm just going to duplicate this over and show you guys how to do that. Get the circle. So I'm going to go over to properties here. I'm going to highlight the letters, highlight the circle, and I'm going to click, click minus to front simple as that so easy it's just on your pathfinder you just click that and it'll remove that white part of the letters so super easy i just created a pattern to get the dots that's like my little signature thing lately i love doing that um yeah that's kind of a little tutorial on how to do like a simple monogram logo you can add a shape around this you can maybe add um pattern or like a circle here like if I wanted to add maybe pull this over 
kind of have it go across like that. Something like this would be kind of cool. And you can like increase the spacing. So something like that, I don't know. You have to kind of play around with it, but just some ideas and then, yeah. So I really like this concept. I think it's kind of fun and like simple. So now you'll see me drawing out the idea I had of like the player's card. So I'm just using my iPad, using the app called Procreate, and I'm tracing an actual player's card, but I'm going to add the touches to make it really unique to her. Um, but Procreate really helps me do these custom logos, and I definitely recommend if that's something you're interested in. So I took the illustration and added that in there, and I think it came together really cool. And then I brought it into Illustrator, image traced it to vectorize it, and we will see if she likes this concept. Okay, I wanted to show you guys kind of the final results of what I sent over to my client. Um, so first off, I had my good friend Anusha. She was a like, guest illustrator for me for this project. I am like so busy lately. I was like, I really, I know that she can nail the vision and stuff. So, and she did. She did an amazing job designing these icons. Um, so the whole goal behind this client's project was I wanted to give her illustrations that she can use as elements like on social media, on, um, you know, her website or something. So I kind of dug through her Instagram, noticed she wears Converse, she likes to swear, <laughs> and we wanted something that looked edgy and fun, and then the mission statement has the word ignite in it. So me and Anusha kind of collaborated on this, but she absolutely nailed it with the overall aesthetics of everything. So yeah, these are the initial icons. Um, I'll show you the first logo concept, just here, scroll down. So this is like how you can kind of see it in the color versions, um, which I think it all came together so nice. And then I also wanted to show it in a collage um, of how it would look all together with the icons. So that's what this is. So yeah, it all flowed together so nice, and I'm so thankful that Anusha was able to help me kind of put these icons together. Um, I think it's going to look so cool when it's all done, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of that final result for this specific concept. Alright you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful to you to see another designer's process of a logo design. I'm so excited to hear back from this client and see what she thinks about it. Um, such a fun one to create and I just love when a client aligns with like my style and not only that but we just clicked and that just makes the logo that much better and that much more like cohesive with what we were thinking so so excited to hear back from her i do provide a type form for my clients to provide feedback um, i have a video that i posted a while ago about getting client feedback and how i like to go about that so i'm gonna wait to see if she fills out that type form but i also give her the option to schedule a call with me if she prefers to you know talk it out sometimes that helps too so we will see what she says, but I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Be sure to go check out those courses if you're interested in learning more. But thank you guys so much for being here and for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.